Take the little cutter out, the blanket over us, cuddle up there. Man, talk about your one-horse open sleigh. That's it. Through the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bobtails ring. Little Albany Cutter, two passenger. Cute little thing that only weighs a mite. Pick it up almost with one hand. Hefton and I have a lot of fun in this. We've driven it a lot. Have a little saddle bred mare that's just as proud as she can be and just a real gore. We put her on and put the sleigh bells on and go. And it's fun. It had a very modest beginning. The 45 I have now weren't anticipated when I first started. It actually started through a rotary project. For years, the Cardson Rotary Club had sponsored the community Santa Claus. I thought it might be a little interesting to bring Santa Claus in town in a sleigh or a cutter rather than in a pickup truck as they had been doing. I was told that up around Marysville in British Columbia, you could still find them at that time in the mid 50s. We took a trailer behind the old shift car and went up in there and spent the day. The snow was deep, but we tramped around through the hills in the old barns and sheds and found a couple of cutters and bought them and drug them out and brought them home. My wife looked out the kitchen window the next morning when it came daylight and saw that trailer with those two old cutters on it and she said, what are you going to do with that pile of junk? <laughs> I got so enthused about that darn thing I didn't hardly sleep. Couldn't have slept much because I got the cutter restored, got a harness and broke the family saddle horse and to drive and brought Santa Claus into town just before Christmas. By that time I had the bug. So that's where it started and it's gone from there. A few years later, I got involved with the Carriage Association. I happened to be reading a Morgan magazine one day, read a little ad in there which said, join the Carriage Association of America, a group of people who are dedicated to the preservation and restoration of carriages and driving as a way of life. I thought, well, for heaven's sakes, there's somebody else crazy besides me, because I knew everybody in town thought I was crazy. When we went to our first carriage conference in Vermont, we didn't know a soul. Finally, we saw Alf Barless come in, the old dairy farmer. Alf was a nice old fellow, and he'd been collecting since the 20s. Alf and I seemed to hit it off right away. We kind of had the same smell about our boots, I guess, and we seemed to understand each other. Alf came over and more or less took us under his wing like long lost friends, because he'd been there and he knew all the people. He said, see that table over there? That's Mrs. DuPont, and that's John Seabrook there, and next to him is Sid Latham, and this is so-and-so, and so-and-so. And so. It sounded uh, just like a who's who of big business in America. After and I thought, man, oh man, we're in over our heads. We don't belong in this bunch. But they turned out to be all nice people, all of them. Beautiful, we've got so many friends in that group now. I like to work with my hands. I like to be creative. I'm not musical. 
I can't tell one note of music from another. I'm not an artist, I can't paint. I can't even draw a straight line, hardly. to work in a shop with leather or with tools of any kind. It has grown where it kind of fits in with my work and with my lifestyle now. I tell people, beware of buggies, they'll sure get you, because they sure got me. I guess I just love the darn things, they seem to fascinate me. Democrat was a very common vehicle out in our country, about as nice as most people ever aspired to. Most people refer to anything that was driven out west and had four wheels and a seat as a buckboard, but many of them were Democrats or spring wagons or top buggies. But the real thing, a little buckboard, is a beautiful little vehicle to drive, very, very smooth ride over the rough roads, just floats along, bounces a little bit, and floats over all the bumps. As a lad growing up here, I hadn't seen anything nicer than a top buggy or a Democrat, and I had no conception of the beautiful, beautiful vehicles which had been used during the era of horse-drawn transportation.
The spider phaeton, made by Burr and Company of New York, is a very nice specimen of a gentleman's sporting vehicle. Fellows today buy a Ferrari or a Porsche or some other vehicle. They go out and drive just for the sheer pleasure of driving. And that was the purpose of a vehicle like the Spider Phaeton. The little seat on the back is called a dicky seat. That's where the groom sat. But I call him the gentleman's gentleman. He put the gentleman's horses to the carriage and the owner drove for the sheer pleasure of it. A farmer in Saskatchewan sent me a letter one day telling me he had a little horse-drawn vehicle out in his junk pile. All he could tell me was it had two seats and a brass cap on the wheels that says, I can read Brewster on it, he said. Well, by the way, that fired my imagination a little bit because I happened to know that Brewster made only real elegant vehicles. So I knew it had to be something a little special, more than just a little ordinary buggy or Democrat. It turned out to be a little tea cart. The front seat was gone, the wheels were rotten from sitting in the drift soil, and weren't sound enough even to carry the weight of the vehicle. The wood that was left on the body was so weathered from the sun and the wind that there really wasn't anything left to it. It's a lot of work. You have to see in your mind the finished product before you start, or at least I do. And if I can catch a vision of the finished product, then all the labor becomes worthwhile. It's now one of my favorite vehicles for pleasure driving. It's very light, very small, and cut under so you can turn on a dime and get back almost a nickel change. The second wheeled vehicle that I got was a Clarence. I picked it up down in the little town of Moriarty near Albuquerque, New Mexico. The front has two curved windows, bevel plate glass. Inside where the passengers sat, there's a mirror on one side. I have to assume that the lady sat on the side with the mirror. There's also a speaking tube on this side, which went up under the box where the driver sat. As I kindly suggest to my wife, I say pay particular attention that whoever sat by the mirror was doing the directing of the driver. If you get the full implication of that, I think they were backseat driving a long time ago. I also note that the driver didn't have a speaking tube. He could hear, but he couldn't talk back. Times haven't changed that much, have they? Body brake or a wagonette was a very popular vehicle in England, which is where I obtained mine. We visited Colonel Greville Williams at his country estate. He was a typical English squire, tweed coat, leather patches on the elbows. His wife expressed how delighted to have somebody from the colonies visit. Not too often we get visitors from the colonies, she said. We smiled at that. <laughs> 
I said to the colonel, I'd really like to get a nice English break to take back to Canada with me to add to my collection. Could you advise me where I would start to look? He said, odd that you should ask. Fortnightly ago, I advertised mine for sale in Hare and Hounds. So we just made the deal. The park drag, oh my. Goes back to the old coaching days in England. Almost identical to the public road coaches that carried passengers and mail in England. The park drag was simply a private road coach. There's a mahogany drawer with a wicker basket in it for the champagne glasses and a place for the picnic hamper. Seats 12 on the roof. Very seldom used the inside because they were a social thing to be seen and to see from on the roof. Men often wore a tuxedo, a top hat, ladies in evening gowns. It's dress up, a social thing. Five Glass Lando is a classic vehicle. It will be just as beautiful 100 years from now as it is today. We took the Lando to Calgary in 1973 for the Queen. It was a most interesting day. We spent the morning rehearsing. They marked off on the blacktop where the limousine would come and explained that since it was a state occasion, the Queen would precede Prince Philip by about six steps. I was to help her into the carriage. Well. The limousine never did make it to the, where the pavement was marked because of the crowds. When they got out of the limousine, Philip didn't wait for the queen to get out. He just got out and wandered up through the crowd ahead of her, state visitor and all, just like any old farmer would do. That tickled me. It made him quite human. He sat down in the carriage and said, well, this is a different carriage. Where did this one come from? We drove around the racetrack and had a real chatty visit. I was standing on the back as footman, but we were visiting most of the way. The queen, both by nature and by the position that she holds, is more reserved than Philip. He's very open and outgoing, but she's quite reserved, but a very, very charming lady. She's a queen.
The most elegant of all the vehicles, I believe, was the eight-spring canoe bottom barouche, an open-style vehicle. It has eight springs, plus the body suspended on leather, and it literally floats. I'd been looking for one for several years. I had fellows looking in Europe, in England, the eastern states, and this one came up in an auction in Texas. I went down hoping I could buy it. I thought I had it bought once at 15, and then I thought I had it bought at 20. The auctioneer stopped the sale, and all three of the auctioneers came down and got around Sid Latham, who was sitting right close to me and bidding also on it. I found out afterwards that what they were saying to him was, now Sid, there's more than money involved here. The honor of Texas is at stake. Now you don't let that go out of Texas. They opened the bidding again and I ended up by buying it for $21,000. As Soon as I did, Sid jumped up and in that Texas drawl of his said, Dawn, you just saved my marriage. Thank God you bought that thing. If I'd gone home with it, my wife divorced me for sure. So I came back at him with this. Sid, just saved my marriage too. Because if I'd gone home without it, my wife couldn't have lived with me. I'd have been so miserable. So Sid has it recorded in the minutes of the Carriage Association that Don Remington owns the only vehicle in recorded history that they know of that has saved two marriages. It's also started a lot of marriages. We've used it for many family weddings. is one that holds a certain fascination for kids. It's a favorite with little boys. fire engine, there is one carriage above all that excites the imagination.
Whoa, steady. Oh, oh. Hey, look, it's Ringo. Yeah. Hello, kid. Hello, Curly. Hiya, Buck. How's your folks? Oh, just fine, Ringo, except my grandfather came up. Shut up. Didn't expect to see you riding shotgun on this run, Marshal. Going to Lordsburg? I figured you'd be there by this time. No, lame horse. Well, it looks like you got another passenger. Yeah, I'll take the Winchester. You may need me in this Winchester, Curly. Saw a ranch house burning last night. You don't understand, kid. You're under arrest. <laughs> 